Hello. Happiness comes from fulfillment. Fulfillment comes from doing stuff we love. It took me 50 years and a health crisis to figure that out. Okay, so I'm a little bit of a slow learner. <laughs> the only way to describe my life the year I turned 50 was broken. I felt totally and completely broken because I was very unhappy, I felt stuck, and to top it all off, I got sick. So I was training for the 2012 Vancouver International Marathon when all of a sudden, one day, I couldn't run one mile, let alone 26.2. I was totally stopped dead in my tracks. I went to the doctor and had so many medical tests that I can't even tell you. I was poked and prodded to the umph degree. And after months and months of testing, my doctor concluded that I probably had some kind of mysterious virus and that there was nothing she could do for me. What? So after feeling like the walking dead for the better part of 2012, in September, I decided to quit my job uh, to regain my health. So there I was, 50 and unemployed. Nothing like feeling like the mayor of Loserville when you are 50 and un unemployed, I'll tell you that. That's that place where you spend all day in your pajamas, eating chips and watching the Food Network. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I campaigned hard to be mayor of Loserville. I ate chips and watched the Food Network with a vengeance. So much so that I got addicted to Top Chef. I love that show and I still do. But funny thing is, it was Top Chef that got me out of my pajamas and off the couch. Watching all of these chefs pursue their passions on national TV and not be afraid to fail, and watching them dedicate all of themselves to what they were doing made me want that too. And what I learned from my addiction to Top Chef was that I wanted to do work that I loved, and I wanted to do work that went to the essence of who I am and what I believe in. So one thing led to another, and I ended up in coaching school in Portland, mostly because Portland is the place where young people go to retire. So I figure I'd fit right in, and I wouldn't feel like such a loser. But the great thing about coaching school was that it's what started me on my journey forward. And my biggest aha moment came when I realized that being in the dark was what enabled me to find my own light and to illuminate my path. So I decided that I needed to figure out how I could actually follow my passion. I know, it sounds crazy, but I thought, hell, I've got to do this, so let's go for it. So I took a leap of faith, knowing that I couldn't go back from where I came from. I didn't love what I did before. And I chose to trust that I could figure out how to make a living doing something that actually mattered to me, doing something that I love. So first thing I did was ask myself, what would I regret not doing in my lifetime? And one of the things I'd always wanted to do was write a book. So I sat down, wrote my first book, self-published it. Then after that was done, I asked myself, okay, what's next? And I decided that I wanted to create a career or a job or a business where I could actually do what I love. Then I set out my not negotiables. And it basically boiled down to one very simple concept. I will only do stuff that I love. I will never settle for just okay, and I give myself permission to say no. Overcoming my own limiting beliefs has been very much like climbing a mountain. I've had to be very intentional about my route choice, mostly because I didn't want to fall off the side of the mountain. And in those times when I have fallen off, I've learned to cling on and pull myself back up. So funny thing about living with intention is that sometimes the stars align. That's what exactly happened in 2015 when an opportunity to teach in the Bachelor of Law Enforcement Studies program at the Justice Institute kind of just fell in my lap. And boy, was I happy that it did because it was absolutely love at first sight. So teaching labor law and civil law has brought me full circle. When I left the practice of law in 2012, I never thought that I would ever do anything remote, remotely related to law again. 
and finding that my place in the world is teaching law rather than practicing law has been just a huge, huge gift for me. So as in my work as a teacher and as a personal development coach, there is nothing more fulfilling than helping others along the journey, their journey and being a very small part of somebody achieving their goals and achieving their dreams. So for me, finding my true north has been about living a life of no regret, making a living on my own terms, and not compromising on my non-negotiables. It's about living my dream and sharing my passion. If I hadn't dared to paddle away from the shore, I would not have been able to change my life. And what I've learned is that happiness is not about settling for that safe and happy and easy place. It's about pushing my boundaries and reaching for my seemingly impossible dream. I'm no longer counting the years to retirement because I love my work, I love what I do. And I feel that helping others to achieve their goals and achieve their dreams is going to, oops, sorry, it's going to be my never ending journey. I'm waiting for the last slide. <laughs> Okay, I haven't timed this as well as I thought I had. <laughs> this is the tattoo that's on my right calf. The runner girl is my alter ego. And the line from the Robert Frost poem pretty much sums up who I am. I've got miles to go before I sleep. Thank you. <laughs>